So I'm gonna make my own Halloween costume this year. I've always thrifted them, but this year I wanna put a little bit more effort in, especially since I'm gonna be photo baggins and he is deserving of all of the effort, so. As opposed to a vest, I'm gonna do more of a corset because I think that's something I'll wear more. And to make it, I thrifted these beautiful orange velvet pants. I think the color is just absolutely perfect. Let's jump right into some spooky kisses. And we're just gonna start by cutting, cutting this up. Mainly starting with the waistband and what is she doing? I really just can't even believe I got that on camera, but anyway, we're just trying to cut this to where we have the biggest pieces possible. So I'm cutting it along the seam lines and I cut the waistband out. So the plan might not go this way, but the plan is to bring it down by two inches, add detached straps, grommets, and boning. So we'll see how this all goes. We'll start out with a plate of tracing and a side of cutting, please. Since this fabric is so flexible, I'm gonna use some usable interfacing just so it mimics that really luxurious stiff velvet and it'll just help with the shape of the bodice. We're just gonna iron that right on. Now that is what I'm talking about. See the difference that interfacing makes? So it's gonna make this shaped beautifully. And I did go through all of my fabric scraps and found this for the lining and I really like it because it just reminds me of something that Bilbo would have. We're gonna pin and sew everything right sides together. Because I'm just prone to messing things up, I'm gonna go ahead and measure out and pin where I want all my boning channels to be. So another day and another gray sweater later, but last night I got it done kind of looks like from this angle, like bat wings, like it's pretty cool. I did all the channels, all my boning. I didn't add boning to the bottom. I don't know if you're supposed to when you're making corsets, but I thought like all this fabric is pretty thick at the bottom. So I thought that'd be enough. And it does fit like super well. I am pretty impressed with myself. I'm just going to be honest. And it really just fortifies my mantra of not measuring or using patterns. So oops. Also, if anyone knows of a really good interfacing brand, please, for the love of God, comment below. Because this one was just not it. Off to do grommets now. Never used grommets though, so I'm kind of nervous. I think it'll be okay. Like, I'm really hoping because I'm super proud of this and I feel like it came out super nice and I don't want to ruin it, but here we go. <laughs> I did a couple test runs. I did not get the kind that hole punches the fabric out for you, so I did it myself on this one and it just i don't know it didn't come out quite right so we'll see i'm gonna try out first on the straps because i can make more of those pretty easily here goes nothing i don't think this is gonna work that great but we shall see i don't have anything else and i did put interfacing at this bottom that's what this square is so it only cut a little bit but i'm just gonna go around it So I have fears of when I put the velvet ribbon through and it gets any stress on it that is the fabric is just going to come right out from under the grommet. So I'm going to go around it with this copper thread and I think it's going to give it more of a hobbity and handmade feel. So I only got a pattern for this because it was on sale at Joann's but I think it's going to make my life easier. So we're going to go ahead and get all of those pieces cut out if I can figure out how to read this. <laughs> Help. Do you want in here? <laughs> Come on, bunny. Does sewing make anyone else extremely sweaty? Had to freaking change. Just <coughs> drizzles. Drizzle, drizzles. What I'm gonna do is basically sew all of this together. And hopefully, more capes. 
Uh, I'm not gonna lie, this is probably the second time in my life that I've used the pattern. So wish me luck. I hate it when I run out of bobbin thread, like mid-project. I'm to the part where I'm making the hood and I have to gather the bottom. So I set my machine stitch, stitch length to the longest and didn't back stitch. That way I can just pull on it and it gathers for me. So far it's awesome. Definitely need shoulder pads to fill this out. But other than that, once I get the leaf, I am ready for Mordor. My boyfriend 3D printed me these leaves and they are way better than the ones I tried to make the other day. But I mean, I think they're okay. They kind of look like the Pillsbury Doughboy got like electrocuted. I mean, there's just not even a comparison. So let's go ahead and get these painted and get the silver detailing on. So to adhere or pin the leaves to the cloaks I made, I'm just gonna use these big safety pins and I'm just gonna hot glue it to the back like that. Keep it easy. As soon as the hot glue gun heats up, I don't know if you've noticed, but I'm pretty impatient. Impatient? Not impatient. <laughs> because I did the gloss and it kind of <laughs> smeared silver, but I'm gonna fix it later when I have a little bit more time and maybe make the silver part raised. We'll see. Totally encased. Caveman and ice. So everything's done, and all I really have left to do is my hair, and we'll be ready for the reveal. I think this has been the best most favorite thing i've ever made i can't believe how well it turned out and thanks for watching i really appreciate it and i'd love to have you in this community of thrifty mess makers because you know i am one so feel free to like and subscribe and stay strange but don't be a stranger and we can't wait to see you next time potatoes